Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, we've got uh, Professor Brown Onoha, who is of the Political Science Department, University of Lagos. As we focus on uh, just previewing a big one, Nigeria at 57, we're looking at some of those issues, even though uh, restructuring, devolution of power is the dominant focus these days. Thank you for coming on this morning, Prof. Thank you for having me. We've just seen this conversation, uh, some of the headlines too, uh, given a different impression now to different groups but is it a coincidence that as we approach uh commemorating our 57th anniversary we have all this conversation about what do we do how do we get the union stronger or did you expect that this conversation will always come up thank you very much um i think there is no surprise or would I say unexpected, you know, um, reality of our Nigerian um, experience? Because from 1960, or even before then to now, the issue of how do we manage our relationship had always been there. I mean, you fought a civil war for three years, so there is nothing that they surprised about it. Less than three years ago, you had a national conference, all on the same. But I think the way to start is even to go back a little. The British colonized us. So by the time we were having independence, we had no choice but to go the, what you call the cabinet system, the prime ministerial system. The military came, 1966. 1977-79, the military went and experimented on American system and gave us presidential system. So. If you take these two, I think why, where the problem has come is that by the time the military was looking at the American system, nobody bothered about the social situation. In other words, that's moving us from parliamentary from prime minister, yes, to, to presidential. presidential. You didn't look at our system, our society, because whatever system you want to bring in, we have to address the uniqueness of a particular society. With the complex situation we had in Nigeria, cultural, religious, and the fact that there was no national leadership, would it be right to bring in the presidential system with all the powers of the president? So what did we have at that time? Regional leadership? We, we had, uh, no, we had you know, regional or ethnic leadership. The problem we have here in our country is that at each point in time, we have never had a national rallying point. We have had ethnic, you know, leaders. For instance, when we are even teaching students, we're talking of nationalism, the period that we fought for independence, did we really have national leaders? Were we ready for independence, from your perspective? Um, how do you get ready for independence? It's a process. In other words, if you didn't get ready by 1960, what would be the guarantee that you get ready in 1960 if you had not followed the process of nation building you build a nation mm. so what the problem we have had all this while is that up to today we've had never had effort conscious effort to build our nation we lost it with the military some great nations were built by the effort of their military mm. turkey okay well, so, well, so well, military did not devote time to building us as a nation yeah. we'll hope to come to that soon yes. but so, if i could take you back a little bit follow up on what you highlighted initially yeah. uh how we missed the point moving from parliamentary system to presidential system even though they gave reasons why we moved thinking it was going to work better mm -hmm. what do you think we could have achieved if we had stayed with the parliamentary system fine now one of the failings of the federation at the time was the structuring was distorted the regions were too big, so big that one region could contest the powers of the center. And one of the principles of federalism is this. You structure in such a manner that none will be so strong to fight the combined effort of all the others. The Dane regions were big. The East was able to fight the entire federation. The North could have done it. The West could have done it. So all you needed to do was to restructure the regional arrangement, make the regions smaller, but give them enough resources, fiscal federalism, to be able to take care of development. Yeah, but if you in other words, in other words, yeah. by the time you had 12 states, I bet you 12 states would have worked very well, leaving them the powers the regions had 
except some few that you would remove from them, while the center will still be doing the supervisory job of uh, internal affairs, sorry, external affairs, defense, and the rest of them. But the regions will be sufficiently strong, strong to manage their own affairs. You now recreated the regions, uh, states, but remove the powers that the regions had before. So you would have preferred case. give them what the resources as strong the resources as they are, and make but them smaller. smaller in size. For instance, what we used to have as a core that is now the south south could have been a region. The east central could have been a region, and so on. The, south, the west southwest, which was west, then could have been a region. They were states. In other words, those twelve states could have been left as states or regions, whichever technology we want, but leave them sufficient powers, fiscal powers, to be able to take care of their affairs. Okay. So it will create a better balance than creating so many states, then leaving them as, uh, I don't know, are they provinces? They have no powers. You now heap all the powers at the center, and then running these as provinces or local governments in the name of states. So, yes. so we missed our point. Now we are here where we have 36 states. Good. But you say we need to go back. How do we go back Fine. and not lose the 36 states? Okay, now there are 36 states. Uh, uh, let me chip in immediately because uh, some are suggesting regions, going back to the zone size regions. That would be even more difficult. More difficult because the states have kept their lives for about 30 years some 50 years since 1967. So reversing them now to regions would be more difficult. What I have suggested, fine, some for uh, we've suggested that even in our writings, 36 states. I mean, if you have time, you may create one in south, uh, southeast. These 36 states, now you have 60, 68 provisions or powers of the constitution with the center, mm -hmm. and only 12 on concurrent. There's even no residual. What we're saying is that constitution, constitutionally, these powers that you have with the center should go back to the states. We have a simple concept, fiscal federalism. Whether it is through derivation or through, uh, you know, however, the, before we had the uh, principles of, you know, derivation, um, you know, uh, according to uh, population, land mass, uh, need national interest. With those ones, we are now able to financially empower the states, give them back some constitutional powers, and then leave the center. We are talking of restructuring. Restructuring is asking for nothing other than give back powers to states while the center stays with supervisory jobs, oh, external, yeah. military, uh, banking, and so on. Those things that will affect all of us commonly. Why do states do the job? Railway, for instance. Can the South-South can decide amongst themselves to start railway amongst themselves. And that will be development. The Southwest has already, I mean, the, the, yeah, the Southwest has already started about some years back now, discussing the possibility of having railway among themselves. Thereby, development will start on. You can't over-concentrate powers at the center and expect the development. It's not working. There, there are those who, are, who would argue that even the states don't seem to be united in this um, desire to get responsibility to even run themselves. I mean, we see in, the, in some of the papers today where some states are saying we don't want restructuring. Uh, uh, no, no. It's not that they don't want the resources. We understand what they're talking about. You know, sure. some of them have privileges. The, their fear is that once you restructure, they lose the privileges. We understand that these are political things. There is no state here now that will say it will reject more, greater responsibilities backed up with financial support. There's none. Because there's nothing going on. Now, there's no development going on because you have overstretched the responsibility of the center. This, I'm sorry to say the center is overwhelmed. Oh, hold yes. on, if I may come in here. Yes. There's something you said earlier about no national rallying point. Yes. What should be the national rallying point that would galvanize this action to devolve powers? I'm sorry, it might appear, it, it might appear simplistic. It's leadership. It might appear simplistic. Simplistic in the sense that how do you evolve national leadership? Unfortunately, we missed it earlier. I mentioned a few things. You know. There is no nation that has developed without having a rallying point around a leader. 
I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to refer to this. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were in Tanzania. For every public office, you have the photograph of Nyerere beside the current president. Every public office, Nyerere. And now we raise the question: Why do you say, "Ah, he's our father"? That stands near here. Unfortunately, we didn't have that. If I may answer you that way, we didn't have a rallying point. The regions were on their own at the time. Our laws, they were fighting for their regions. So they had no national leader. And I'm sorry to say we still haven't had one.